Hi guys, Takeshi here. No process video for you this week. After the YouTube Live I did, I felt like there were a few questions I couldn't fully answer, so I've made a proper introductory video for you guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Here we go. My parents were both Japanese and they immigrated in the 60s. I was born in Canada in a small town called Ajax. Uh, it's a suburb of Toronto. This is uh, 1978, and uh, I'm currently living in Tokyo. I've been here about 12, 13 years now. Um, so I enjoy being able to go back to Canada. And they're still there. Uh, so ironically, I moved back to, to Japan uh, while they're still in Canada. So. You know, I have my relatives here, and I, I enjoy the food, and I enjoy the, the, the culture of comics and illustration, I feel is a bit more uh, mainstream here. So. I, I really, I enjoyed drawing all my life, I remember uh, there was, uh, of course, this is, I was growing up in the 80s, there was no internet. Uh, going to a movie theater was quite a, a hassle, uh, you know, the entertainment was quite thin back then. And I remember, I mean, living in the suburbs of Toronto, there's nothing but cornfields and forests and, you know, enjoying outdoor things was great. But uh, if you want to be stimulated in other ways, it's, it was difficult to find that. So you had to make your own fun. We would just draw all day and show each other our drawings and like sometimes make stories out of them and uh, that was you know that was kind of the way we used to just entertain ourselves and so that slowly became something that i really enjoyed and focused on and i wanted to and i, I my parents bought me lots of manga when i was young to teach me japanese so in a way their educational efforts made me a comic book artist Um, for me, I was making zines when I was in high school, and I remember selling them to my classmates. And I did go downtown to Toronto to sell them at a comic book store. Uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the zines I made. Um, it's like A4 folded in half. My dad would photocopy these at his work, uh, and then I would staple them at home. And, uh, this one is a dollar. <laughs> I remember. I didn't know how contracts work or anything, so the, the store owner would just scribble something on paper. Mm -hmm. Like, well, 50% to the store, 50% to you. So you only got 50 cents? Yeah, 50 cents. <laughs> but you know, like, that, that turned into a comic right. career, right? right. So I was, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, luckily, uh, some people saw them, like other comic people. Uh, some people read them, and uh, they got in touch with me. And this is all through before email, right? So, like, sending me letters or whatever. and. So then, you know, we would collaborate and then we eventually worked on something and more people saw it. And then I would eventually meet uh, C.B. Sobolski, who at the time wasn't working for Marvel, but, um, you know, I, we got to work together as well. And he edited, edited one of my um, creator own books and uh, just through making connections like that. You know? The first like professionally published book was called Sidekicks uh, with writer Jay Torres and that's the book that CB edited for us. I uh, started at Marvel maybe two or three years after the publishing of the book and I was put on uh, a book called Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane uh, with me and Sean McKeever. And then after that I was put on uh, Runaways uh, for a few issues and I think Miss Marvel was, I think, one of my most well-known characters, and I did Miss Marvel for about two two years. And then after that, I left to do some creator own work called uh, Met Connect You, and this was with Greg Peck. And I, I worked with Greg at Marvel doing uh, Hulk uh, and Amadeus Cho, and so 
you know, yeah, amazing writer. I really love, enjoy working with him. So I did make it at you. And then also with Greg, we would do a lot of Kickstarter projects together. So Princess Saved Herself. Uh, we did another kids ABC book called ABC Disgusting. Um, and uh, oh, we did a, um, another book called uh, Code Monkey Save World. So, uh, we're gonna work on a third book. So uh, after Mar Miss Marvel, uh, I was on Spider Gwen for about a year and a half. And right now, uh, I'm geared to, to start on a silk book, but with the things happening in the world, it's been kind of delayed. So hopefully, uh, you know, within the next couple months, I'll be back on silk. So usually when I get a, a script, I'll read it, um, start to finish, then do rough thumbnails right on the script page, and, and then I would transfer it onto an A4 paper, uh, not tightly drawn or anything, just like still loosely drawn, and that's what I would show my editor. But usually uh, on a per page basis, I figure out what is the most important panel. Uh, usually sometimes they just say on the, on the script, like biggest panel on the page. So I'll follow that, but sometimes uh, it isn't mentioned, so I'll pick the most important panel and then work from there, work backwards almost. Um, you know, a lot of times the number of panels kind of dictates where things go and uh, which panel ends up being the biggest. Um, and then there's the emotional aspect of what's going on in the scene. So, you know, taking all that into consideration. And then uh, a lot of times if it's something similar to like a movie I've seen or another comic I've read, I'll take cues from all those things and mix them all in and um, decide what needs to be shown and what doesn't. I usually pencil and ink my pages. For the characters, I usually use uh, like a dipping nib like this, a G pen. Um, and the, the line weight is really good on these, so I recommend any artist to use these for the characters. And then I use just regular sort of tech pens uh, these specifically, the pigmas, for the backgrounds. I don't do digital work as much. I clean up, I clean up pages on the computer, but that's as far as I, I do digitally. I feel like the beauty, <laughs> the beauty of being a comic artist. Uh, I feel like I get to invest in myself. I. The only person that's accountable ultimately is myself and my motivation and the amount of effort I put into my work. I like the, uh, the independence of what I do. And of course, you know, it's a, comics is a co collaborative medium as well, so I, I like meeting new people, working with new writers, and um, you know, meeting fans, of course, is a really great part of, the, of what I do. Future goals, uh, you know, I moved to Japan uh, with the intent of publishing in like a weekly or a monthly or something. Um, it was much more difficult than I, I, I thought. Uh, I did manage to publish here, but not to the extent that I was happy with. So I think my ultimate goal in life would be to, to do something, maybe not directly with the publishing companies here, but something within that framework. And in order to do that, I need to write and I need to draw. Drawing is the easy part. So I'm kind of, I've always been studying how to write better and um, I've, I've always worked with a writer, you know, and that, that's been great, I love it. But I think so, there's some times when I feel like I want to just do things that are very personal to me. So I think that's my ultimate goal. I think if you wanted to be a comic artist, uh, the best thing to do would be just to, to draw as much as you can, have a presence online, and uh, go to shows, show editors, make connections. Uh, and that can be all done you know, through Twitter or Instagram, and it's much more easier nowadays to, to get your, to your, get your show, work shown around. Specifically for breaking into a North American uh, industry, uh, so like Marvel, DC, uh, some self-publishing stuff, it all applies. Um, I, my answer is, well, I'm assuming um, that you have a foundation in art and drawing already.
say you want to be a, a comic book artist and um, but you don't know any you know editors you don't know anybody else in your small town that draws or does comics um, in that case then my advice always to new people is like start small so I've met so many of these kids that come to me at cons and they have this like epic 10 issue gigantic story that they want to do and they don't know where to start and my answer is always the same like don't don't do that just start with uh, like a short story um, do something like five to ten pages and you will learn so much from that short story Uh, another thing is to have a community that you can rely on. Um, so it's important to have uh, like clubs or, or cons or uh, like you know drink and draws. Um, I'm sure just uh, plenty of those like uh, meetup apps and stuff. So you know get just get yourself out there. And another piece of advice is to have a strong portfolio. And another example is like having a sketchbook. So I recommend if you have enough sketches or um, you know pages you've drawn, make it into something like this. Um, I made this a few years ago. Uh, this pretty much sums up everything I've done. It doesn't have uh, comic pages in it. It's all illustration. So and in, in terms of that, I that's something that's missing from this. Um, I'm planning to make a second one, so maybe I'll put pages in that. But uh, if you want to be a comic book artist, the most important thing in your portfolio should be sequential pages. So, uh, you know, one off illustrations are great, uh, it shows off your skill as an artist, but, uh, you know, being a comic book artist isn't about just drawing, it's about being able to tell a story and um, telling emotion and, and getting, you know, uh, that human aspect across to the reader. So. Uh, make sure you have pages in your sketchbook uh, or portfolio. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys got to know me a little better. Uh, we'll be back to our regular programming with my process videos next week. Uh, and then a live video at the end of the month. So please stay tuned for both. Okay, see you guys later.